Cambridge, a city rich in history. While over the last decade or so it's seen an incredible tech boom inviting the likes of Apple and Microsoft, amongst it all nestled away in our town square is Cambridge Market, a staple of the city since Saxon times, a place where locals and tourists alike can get their food, clothes and repairs. But the market in this form may be coming to an end. As we leave a year of lockdown, councils are pushing to reimagine this space. And while I must admit the idea does sound quite appealing, how did the traders who were there already feel about it? I'm Glennis Self and I run a stall on the market. I have a big double stall. I'm a jeweller and an artist. I've been here for 22 years and my customer base is still with me from all those years ago. I'm uh, Lee Humphreys, I'm the owner of the Cambridge Fishmonger took it over from my uncle. In total, it's probably been within the family for about 40 years. I'm Phil Graves and this is uh, Peter Graves Florist. Uh, we've been here, uh, well, before my time. Uh, we've been on the market for 63 years, market still six days a week. In 2019, Cambridge Council began exploring ideas to transition the square into a hybrid trade event space by replacing the permanent stalls with demountable ones that would come down at night. Two years on and these plans show no sign of stopping. When I first saw it, I remember when we were at school doing technical drawing, we had a, one of our projects was to do, make a delta wing, and then we, we, uh, we built them out of balsa wood. We, most of the, the delta wings looked like the top of the stall. We made them out of balsa wood or paper or card. The square has got a windrose. Now that means that wind comes up certain channels, which are streets, and converge in one place and sort of burst burst onto that space and become like a spiral and they call it a windrose. If we have anything that isn't sturdy within the windrose, we're in big, big trouble. They are proposing to turn this market into a flexible space, which is appealing, but the logistics of it are a nightmare for the businesses on the market. Like, it's all well and good me saying that I can build a house in 12 months time but it's not until you finally start pulling stuff apart and actually getting stuff put back that you know the time scale. Until the op uh, market officers are, are putting these up and taking them down you're not really going to know a time scale. To be honest I, I don't think I could work with the pro proposed changes as they are. In early 2020, stakeholder meetings took place inviting, amongst others, Cambridge market traders whose views were to be taken into account. So why was there a disconnect between the market plans and the traders' needs? I mean, I've done research on urban redevelopment and urban regeneration across other parts of the UK, even other parts of the world. That's just, that's just normal. Um, I mean, consulting is very difficult because you have a huge diversity of people to speak to. Um, so councils are not generally that good at doing that. My name is Sarah Gonzalez and I am Associate Professor at the School of Geography, University of Leeds, and I've been doing research on traditional retail markets for about maybe 10 years or so. Generally, councils, you have to understand, you probably do already, that councils are under a huge amount of financial pressure. They have to try to generate more income from wherever they can. Consulting and getting a lot of very diverse opinions that might go against the idea, it's, um, you know, that might be later plan. On the surface, it appeared that there had been constant communication between stallholders and the council. Head of the council's environmental service, Joel Carey, told the scrutiny committee that the concept design was the result of two years of work with significant input from stakeholders. While Councillor Rosie Moore said that maintaining a seven day a week market was the heart of the project. But how did the traders feel? They held the meeting on, on a day which was predominantly a work night quite late. Uh, so a lot of the market traders couldn't actually attend. The ones that could attend, from what I believe, it was mainly telling them what's going ahead and the small amount of time that was allotted uh, for questions and answers did get run into and was made a lot shorter than, than proposed. I was under the impression as well it was going to be a, an ongoing process that we were going to be consulted all the way along, but we haven't been. Things we find out are through a lot of the time it's through the public um, request for public information. The councillors need to come down onto the market and look at what we what we need and talk to us. And then I realised they weren't going to do that. I've emailed them, I've phoned them. There's no communication at all. I've got a whole list of emails. You know, like I can show you my, my sent emails and not one reply ever. I've sent them to Joel Carey, to Suzanne Hemingway, to Rosie Moore. 
and I've never got a reply. Well, they come when we're not here. They don't come and talk to us here. Cancel is a business at the end of the day. No matter what business you have, you know, you're not going to make that work initially in such a large organisation. But just, just to come down and have, have a presence and, and ask questions, just like even, even a simple, are you OK today? Like, it's just a simple question, isn't it? The, the, the market should be returning to normal on the 12th of uh, uh, April. Keep asking, where's the plan? Where's the plan? I need to stock up. I need, you know, I need to get my staff back. There's no consultation at all. If I run my business like they run their council, then I, I would have been gone a long time ago. You know, redevelopment, often maybe this is not intended, but some market traders can, can just lose their businesses. And I don't know exactly just of this particular redevelopment, but it very rarely goes smoothly. The question is, who is this redevelopment for? What is it for? Who's going to benefit from it? A report on stakeholder feedback revealed that stores may need to be taken down at midday the day prior to events to accommodate them. Along with the hints of festivals like the big weekend and guest markets during peak times, traders were concerned that they weren't being fully considered. They want to put on lots of events down here, which is a really good idea, but the trouble is that there's a fully functioning market here. They want to put events on, like the big weekend, when you're drawing crowds of 10, 20,000 people probably over the weekend, you ain't going to fit that on the market square anyway. I think it would be the little weekend, don't you? One general trend that's happening with markets is that even though after redevelopment markets are still markets, they are a different kind of market. I've been using this term, which doesn't sound very good, but it's kind of the gourmetization of markets. They become more gourmet. I'm worried about this, this shift because that is catering for higher income, younger people who, to be honest, already have the high street more or less for them. So it, we were leaving behind the more marginalised groups that, that do actually need, you know, affordable food. We all, we all need food. I feel really defensive about the market community. I think, well, if this community can't survive the events, I think of all those lonely people that come down here just to say hello and touch base. There's so many. The Office of National Statistics published findings that in the month following the initial lockdown start last year, 30.9% had said that their well-being had been affected through feeling lonely in the past week. Adjusted to represent the population, this would be 40.3%, roughly 9.5 million people. Customers are going there and socialising. They're particularly rich and beneficial for marginalised groups, the elderly, for many old people, a chat with a trader might be the only perhaps social interaction they've had in the day. You know, we come back out of the first lockdown, people were falling back in love with the market again. It means a lot to me, I'd say they're not no just customers, a lot of them are, are friends. People don't even care whether you buy something or not, and they're not just making bacon butties and they're not just making cups of tea, they are providing a huge service in this city for lonely people or people that just need a bit of connection. The market is not just a place to make money from benefits, they are kind of intangible, you can't put a figure on them. So therefore it's quite hard for councils to insert this information into their financial accounting and so on. It's somewhere where they can say, this is our Cambridge. I think that sense of belonging is in our identity. It's, it's what makes us who we are. We come from somewhere. We belong to somewhere, you know? January of this year saw internet sales rise to roughly 36% of all retail in the UK and with almost 90% of UK shoppers using Amazon, what would happen to Cambridge Market and other traditional markets like it? Were these changes inevitable? Not at all. I'd, I'd pretty much disagree completely in that respect. With our online shopping, the other side of that is that people get fed up with it and they want to go out and they want to talk to people and they want to see especially the connection of seeing, meeting and talking to the person that's actually made the thing that you're buying. That is valuable. Pre-Covid, we were getting busier and busier and Covid has just kind of uh, re-educated the public into fresh food and, and shopping outdoors and they have absolutely loved it. Not, not just for the quality and the social side of it, but just being outdoors and shopping rather than being cramped in a supermarket and told that you have to stand here, you have to stand there, you have to queue this way, please go to the self-checkout. Well no, you don't go to self-checkout, you see someone, you talk to them, you, you get 
you get advice there and then. One issue that always comes up with redevelopment is that if you sort of oppose redevelopment, you are then pictured as being against change. Just because you don't want a particular redevelopment, that doesn't mean you're not you're not in favour of change. I agree that Cambridge market needs to change. Like, not not disappear, not not change drastically, not not like pretty much knock down a historic building to put up some cineplex. What it needs to do is it needs to move forward to the 21st century but keep its characteristics. You can look forward uh, and see its positivity in in what can happen or what can be there. Yeah, we're just a bit of a tidy up. That's all it needs. Some people might think, oh, it's the, just the, it's just the shop, isn't it? So why should we worry so much about it? Um, but I see more of a public space, you know, where if you think about British city centres, they're becoming more, they're very commercialised. And I see markets almost as one of the few places where you can still, people can still hang around and, in, in, and spend hours there without necessarily paying a lot of money. So I do still think they're worth supporting for that reason. What does the store and the market in general mean to you? Uh, it's not just my livelihood, what people think. Right, especially during lockdown, it's probably kept me quite sane. I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's been my whole life. It's been my way of life since, uh, well, it's the only job I've ever done since left school at, well, 15. <laughs> We are in great danger of losing this community which actually thrives because of the business continuity. If there wasn't a market here, we, there, there wouldn't be a, a community. There is a sense of camaraderie. We're all in the same position now. We're speaking to each other more, mainly because we're concerned about the future, I guess, a lot of it. It's a community within a community on the market. Community comes round. Lots of diverse stores. People that people have known all their lives. They're selling pears and they're selling apples. But what's going on while they're selling the pears and the apples is the stories. How is your granny? How are the children? How are your grandchildren? Look at your grandchildren. Look how she always puts her foot outside the outside her little buggy like that. Always, you know, it's little things like that. That's what makes community. I'd love to stay down the market, but please let me stay down the market. Don't make it. Don't make me leave. Regardless of position, it's hard to deny that traders have felt left out. Cambridge's Market Square is only one of many traditional markets that have got a tough time ahead of them, but that doesn't mean that they'll go without a fight. One of these consultant developers sitting next to me and I said very low under my voice, I said, over my dead body. And he was like, ah. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, I don't know if you want to put that in, maybe not.